I'm sending this out, realizing it will be controversial, just to challenge thinking. Beginning in the 1930s, the Nazis suppressed freedom of speech, and they visited penalties on those who spoke in ways of which they disapproved. On November 9 and 10, 1938, there was Kristallnacht, the night of broken glass, when violent protests were perpetrated against the Jews, their synagogues, and their businesses, whom they blamed for all the troubles in the world. It was the Nazis who persecuted those Christians and others who disagreed with their agenda and their political beliefs. While I'm not equating the liberal left with the Nazis, nevertheless, in America, I have yet to see conservatives rioting in the streets, breaking windows, damaging businesses, and setting fires. Nazis did that. It's not conservatives who sued businesses that on the basis of religious convictions refused to bow to the political stances or concepts of discrimination set forth by liberal progressives. National Socialism had its own version of that. It's not conservatives suing those who refused them service because of their votes or beliefs. Nazis pressured Germans not to patronize Jewish businesses merely because of their Jewishness. It's not Christian university student bodies barring speakers whose stances don't line up with their conservative views or rioting and destroying property in protest. And yet many on the radical left have the temerity to label conservatives as Nazis. What has happened to civil discourse? When did our universities cease to be places where conflicting ideas and philosophies could be intelligently and respectfully debated so that students could be well informed on all sides of vital issues in order to make their own decisions? How have we come to a place where violence and destruction of property are excused or justified as freedom of speech? When and how have we come to a place where being inclusive and tolerant has come to mean that we will be inclusive and tolerant only of those who agree with us? This is a very dangerous time in American history. And it's not about the government, not about presidents past or present, Democrat or Republican. It's about national character and what we've allowed ourselves to become. There's no room for hate. No room or excuse for dishonoring of any human being, no matter who they are, racially, ethnically, politically, philosophically, religiously, or sexually. Please note that I am not exonerating conservatives. There has been hate speech on both sides. Conservatives, as well as my beloved fellow evangelical Christians, have been guilty of fanning the flames of hate and division, against which I've cried out for many years to little avail. Conservatives have certainly contributed their fair share of ugliness to this mess. We share the guilt as a people. Please, America, stop all this. Fall on your knees. Repent and pray before it's too late. Your blood is ever cleansing. You live so I am.